Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name's Nadia and this is the place where we get real. And today we are talking about erogenous zones. What are they and where exactly can you find them? By the time you finish watching this video, the way you get physical and get down and dirty is going to be forever changed. So make sure you keep on watching. Welcome back to my channel. Are you serious with me? Oh my god, oh my god! <laughs> I don't understand how these things always happen to me. So it's fair to say that when it comes to women's bodies, a lot of men are quite confused. And I'm not saying this to have a go at men. I'm saying this because sex education sucks. It really does not actually teach boys about girls' bodies. Girls don't even barely learn about our own bodies. And that's why so many women struggle to experience pleasure in the bedroom. And so many of their male partners struggle to help get them to climax and just help them to feel relaxed and like they're having a good time. And this is where erogenous zones come in. And erogenous zones are just essentially places on the body that can bring intense pleasure and spark sexual arousal for a lot of women. They can be different for every woman, but there are seven which are fairly reliable for most women. <laughs> And there is a very famous scene in Friends where Monica Geller acknowledges this. Four, two, two, or seven. Five, seven, six, seven, 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 seven. So with no further ado, let's get straight into the first erogenous zone on the female body. This one should not be hopefully too shocking for too many of you. A lot of people when they're making out will often touch their partner's ears and they might even nibble them or just stroke them a little bit. I personally just go wild with anything to do with my ears and I love touching my partner's ears. It is like a big turn on for me and it is for a lot of women and this is because the ears are an area of our bodies that in general don't really get touched. They don't really get a lot of attention and they're a very delicate area on the body so they can be quite sensitive and for that reason they are a great way to just get a woman turned on and even just get her more kind of in her sensual state. And what I recommend doing is actually stroking a woman's hair behind her ear. Ah, oh, this is such a turn on because it feels so gentle and nurturing and it makes a woman feel like she's being taken care of and it's just sexy. And so then once you've stroked around the ear, you might want to try just gently tugging on the earlobe, very gently. You're not aiming to yank her ear off. It's just a very gentle tug. And then if she's receptive to it, you could even try and go in and gently kiss and nibble on her ear but do make sure that you are getting the right signs back because not all women are going to be into that. So listen out. Is she moaning? Is she communicating pleasure? Or does she seem like it's just not really working for her? If that's the case, then just move back to stroking her hair behind the ear. This one is a pretty universally fail safe one that every woman is going to enjoy. One of the most neglected parts of a woman's body when it comes to getting it on are the lips. And no guys, I'm not talking about the lips down there. I'm talking about the lips up here. And this is because we don't really put a lot of emphasis on the role of kissing when it comes to female arousal. But research actually indicates that slow, passionate, extended kissing, and this is kissing that lasts for a couple of minutes or more, is really a key factor in unlocking a woman's arousal. And that's because kissing is so incredibly sensual and intimate 
and most importantly, it allows a woman time to warm up. Unfortunately, we do get taught that sex is very much about taking our clothes off and getting on down to the main event, and that doesn't allow a woman enough time to get around. From research, we know that women can take up to 20 minutes in order to be lubricated enough to really be able to enjoy getting it on with you. And so in order to allow her to get that lubrication going, kissing is honestly, this is the go-to. This is where it is at, guys. Let me tell you, every time I make a video where I acknowledge the role of kissing, there are at least a couple of women in the comment section who say, yes, this girl knows what she's on about. And that's for a good reason, because I have never met a woman who doesn't say a man who is really into kissing and who is really sensual and passionate and in his kiss is such a turn on. And it's sort of giving her a little taster of what's to come, pun intended. It's no surprise that one of the main places teenage girls get caught out with hickeys is on their necks. Now, big confession for you, I am a little bit of a hickey queen. I have a bit of a reputation for hickeys, and I mean like as an adult. It is actually quite embarrassing, really, to have hickeys as an adult in such obvious places. And also, the neck, there is a sense of vulnerability around it. When we have our neck exposed to someone, it's kind of like we are letting them into a very vulnerable place to let them right in close there. And so having a man kiss and suck and lick and nibble on your neck can just feel amazing. I should also say here that while I am referring to men a lot in this video because I do have a lot of male viewers, all of this works regardless of your gender. So regardless of how you identify on the gender spectrum, if you are with a woman, she is going to enjoy having her neck just caressed and attended to. And I would recommend starting out by only touching the neck with your hand, and you can do that by sliding a hand around the back of her neck while you are kissing her, and then you can move the kiss down from her lips to her neck. Oh, I'm getting actually turned on just thinking about this. I feel like most men are pretty versed in this particular erogenous zone. In fact, I feel like some men spend way too much time on this erogenous zone. Now, this is just a personal preference. I personally love some good titty action, but I don't like it to go on for too long because it just can start to feel a bit irritating after a while. I like to really mix it up. And I find in general, because we really don't teach men about women's bodies, that a lot of men tend to head straight for the breasts and then really forget about all the other amazing erogenous zones. So what I would recommend is that you actually focus on a woman's breast after you have already used a couple of the other erogenous zones on this list. The breasts are obviously a lot more sexual and so that's why I recommend starting out with something that's less overtly sexual, something like the ears or the neck, and then you can work from there down to the breast. And that also gives her a little bit of time to build anticipation, which is going to help with her arousal. Now, in terms of what you can do to stimulate the breast, one of the best things that you can do is just gently lick and suck a woman's breasts and nipples. Also cupping your hands around the breast and gently stroking them. Porn does tend to show a lot of women getting their breasts slapped. And while there certainly are women who enjoy this and there's absolutely nothing Nothing wrong with enjoying that if that's what you're into. This is more of a niche fantasy, which I feel like porn has made look a lot more mainstream than it really is. The vast majority of women are going to want something a lot gentler. They're not going to want pinching or slapping or biting. They're just going to want gentle caressing and licking and stroking. And you can, again, gauge if you can build up to something a little bit more intense by slowly building up, maybe trying some gentle nibbling and then seeing how she responds. If she reciprocates well, then you can build on up. 
I feel like so many women enjoy a little pat or a little circle on the ass when we're out with our partners in public. I know I personally do. I really enjoy just that gentle little cheeky little pat on the butt when we're out. It just can put me in a little bit of a frisky mood and it's fun and it's something that is not too intense and it can be a really nice way to work up to something slightly more sexual if you are making out with a woman you can gently slide a hand down to her butt and circle it around her butt and maybe give it a gentle pat and then during intercourse you can work up and try actually lightly spanking now again this is something that I think porn has given a fairly inaccurate idea of for a lot of men men are taught through porn that all women want to be spanked and we want to be spanked really hard, hard enough that it leaves a very dark mark on us. And again, there are women who love this and there are women who will really enjoy this if you do it, but you should absolutely never ever assume that this is something that the woman you are with is going to enjoy. The only way you can possibly find that out is by getting consent. So if you're in the bedroom and you want to try spanking, ask her, would you mind if I get if you a little spank. I think it would be such a turn on. And if she says yes, do not go straight up to a hard slap because that's going to be a real shock and it might be too much for her and it could risk turning her off that altogether. Start with a really gentle spank and then ask for her feedback. Say, how was that? Would you like me to go harder or softer? In the same way that you would if you were giving her a massage, ask her for feedback and then adjust your intensity based off the feedback that she is giving you. Inner thighs can be such a great way of working up to giving a woman oral sex. And it's something that personally really gets me in the mood when I'm with a sexual partner and instead of just going straight on down to pussy town, they actually slowly work their way up my inner thighs, just gently licking and kissing and even gently nibbling, just working their way up so that I can really build that excitement and that that anticipation and building anticipation is so important for women because women need that time to get lubricated we need to be stimulated not just physically in our body but in our mind we know from all the research that there is a really strong link between a woman's mind and her vagina her ability for her vagina to get lubricated in the first place so if you're not going straight to her pussy and you're actually working up through some gentle licking and nibbling and sucking, then you're giving her time to imagine what it's gonna be like when you do finally get on down to Pussy Town, and that is going to help her to get in the mood. Okay, so this one probably didn't need to be said. It's pretty obvious for most of us that our vulvas and our vaginas are obviously an area that have the potential to bring us a lot of pleasure. But I will add with this one that when you are thinking about a woman's genitals, a lot of men are taught really to just think about the vagina and penetration. And it's really important important to actually think externally and think more actually about the clitoris because research shows that for roughly two thirds of women, the clitoris is where it's at for orgasm. And this means that most women will not be able to achieve an orgasm through vaginal penetration alone. They will need clitoral stimulation in order to get to O-Town. So keep that in mind, some gentle stroking with your finger and circling around can be really great and obviously oral sex can be great and allowing her to have a clitoral vibrator in the bedroom is oh it's it's where it's at guys the clitoral vibrator plus penis combination I mean that combo is like unbeaten it's it's really where it's at so please don't be weird about vibrators and about her using one in the bedroom if you have any sort of concerns about what it means for her to use a vibrator in the bedroom, please go and watch this video I made on myths about vibrators that need to end and you'll see me explaining why 
the idea of a woman having a vibrator being somehow a critique on your performance as a man is an idea that needs to die. And I really hope that you guys have learned something from this video. If you did learn something new, let me know in the comment section down below. And while you're at it, hit that subscribe button because so many of you watch these videos and haven't subscribed yet. And I don't know, I'm, should I be taking it personally that you don't want to subscribe? Don't hurt my feelings, guys. Hit that subscribe button and make my day because I do get excited every time I see one of you guys hit it. And I just love having you guys be a part of my sex positive community. All right, and with that said, I will see you all in the next video. Mwah.